Good morning. Good morning. We're having a computer computer glitch this morning, so use your bulletin. You can follow along just as though it's up here. And all of the songs, uh, the number for the hymnal is listed there. So you might see it pop up somewhere during the line, but I don't think so. Thank you. Probably many of you know that uh, Pastor Shannon and uh, Darren have been in, in Colorado this past week where their daughter was uh, getting married. Expect to her to be back in the office tomorrow. But if you see someone in the audience today who looks an awful lot like her, it's because their dog got homesick and called it to come back home. <laughs> so they are here today. And as what I hear, the dog is doing much better now that they're back here. So, it's nice to be missed when you're gone, but we want you to know that we miss you too. I'm glad to have you back. Yeah. A few announcements would like to just uh, make a special note of. One is that this Friday we're starting a new opportunity for uh, helping in this community. One of the big events we have in Custer, and that is the Buffalo Roundup. If some of you, like me, have attended that over years past, you know we usually set out very early in the morning to spend a couple hours sitting in the park waiting for the sun to come up and the gates to open. Well, we thought it might be nice if people had a hot burrito to eat during that time, and if they would like to have one, we'd like to offer it to them, and it would also offer us some financial support for some of the mission work we do as a congregation. So if you'd like to help with that effort, there's a sign-up sheet, in the narthex there, where you can come either to help warm those burritos and off to people on Friday morning or Thursday afternoon to help prepare them. So that's in here in your bulletin. Also, Sunday school has started for us, and Bonnie Thompson would like to make a special announcement about that. We've had some fine teachers show up, but they've outnumbered the students so far, so we'd like to be sure you know that that has started. Yes, it's so exciting that we're starting Sunday School again. This is our third week, but we need you to spread the word, invite your neighbors, your friends. We have um, fifth grade is the oldest, so it's uh, newborns through fifth grade. So if you're a, you have a newborn, just bring, bring your parent along if you are a newborn. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of silly. <laughs> anyway, you know what I mean. Just uh, please spread the word, because we want lots of kids to come and enjoy Sunday school. We have plenty of volunteers at this time, so thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. You're welcome. October 4th is a big day in our congregation. We're going to, on that Wednesday evening, have the worship around the cross here that Wednesday evening. It's also the beginning for a new confirmation class, so please make special note of that. It'll be our... Worship around the cross and confirmation is first night for those new confirmation class people as well. We are very happy to have Karen Gunderson here with us this morning. We're looking forward to her inspirations uh, of song and speaking as she shared with us in, during our hymns this morning, especially during offering and also during the message this morning for us as well. So, Karen, welcome. Wonderful to have you here. Looking forward to being part of our worship uh, this morning. Any other announcements we should make that you know that should be offered at this time? Let us begin then with our call to worship. Come as you are. Some of us come in fear and doubt, others in hope and joy. But God's arms are open wide to receive us all. Thanks be to our faithful and loving God. We share together our confession and forgiveness. We confess our sins before God and one another. Let's take a few moments of silence to reflect on our lives before sharing that corporate confession together. God of all that is, we have failed to trust 
you to care for us. We have tried to be our own God in our lives and the lives of others. We have not listened to your call nor lived in faithfulness to you. We have caused harm directly and indirectly to ourselves, our neighbors, in your creation. In your infinite grace and mercy, forgive and restore us, so that with your help we might become the people you created us to be. And so we end here the good news, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we are made new creations in Christ Jesus, and through his selfless sacrifice, God forgives us all our sins. Walk with God in this newness of life. I invite you to share together in the singing of our opening song. This is my song. It's on page 887. 887. <laughs>
Give us peace in our hearts and call us back to where you would have us be. Amen. thinking, someone finally sees me. 
The two men ended up in the checkout lane together, and the man who had said hello to the refugee invited him to share a cup of coffee with some of his friends in the community. Which of these do you think was a neighbor to the refugee, Jesus asked. The expert in the law replied, the one who reached out to him. Jesus told him, go and do likewise. Sadly, the actions of the first two people in this parable I saw happen to my Afghan students while they were in Albania. You may be seated. When I came to Albania last year to teach English to Afghan refugees waiting to come into the U.S. and Canada, I came with only one intention, to love each one with the love of God and see them in their worth and value, not to try to change or convert them because I had learned when I was a foster parent that what I might view as a gift to them, to them would seem to be taking away one of the few things that they were able to bring with them, which was their faith. I quickly realized that I had never entertained the idea of just how difficult it is to be a refugee trying to integrate into a new country like the U.S. When my mom was dying, I had gotten my international English teaching certification as I sat by her bedside. I asked God to open the doors for me to use it at the right time. And nine months after she died, I, and I had only told one friend I had this certification, I got an email asking if I would consider teaching English to Afghan refugees in Albania. This was the first experience in my life. I'm getting a lot of feedback up here. I don't know if you can hear it back there. This was the first experience in my life where I saw how one person really can make a difference in a community just by being loved in a practical and helpful way that fits your gifts and personality. I quickly realized that um, it would be very difficult for these people to integrate into the U.S. because they were coming from a place where everyone walked everywhere. Only the very wealthy had a car. So every day they saw the same people on the streets. They, um, you know, it, because it, Afghanistan is a Muslim country, they would often meet up to five times a day at the mosque to pray just for five minutes, but it was a time to have a fellowship and a very close social network. And so this makes our country, when they come to it, seem like solitary confinement. They're like, where are all the people walking on the streets? And there's no one to have that social connection with. And when they see that they look a little different, they do. You know, I mean, you know too. Maybe this happens when all the bikers are here. You're a little afraid of them, so you're not sure if you want to say hi or not. But you know, that's really important because those people, a lot of them join the biking group to find some place where they belong. They don't feel like they belong or they didn't feel worthy maybe. And so it's really important for us as a church to reach out to anyone new who comes into our community. Well, for the refugees who come here, what they thought would be the land of milk and honey is often a cold, lonely place where people are looking at you with suspicion or fear. And if they happen to find out you're from Afghanistan, many will literally turn and run or say, don't shoot me. That I saw happen. And even though these Afghans, many of them are well educated, their education and years of service are disregarded here, making a doctor, lawyer, civil engineer, or journalist into a dishwasher, or hotel house cleaner, or security guard, starting as over again as though they were a teenager. And once you're here in the U.S., everyone back home assumes that you know President Biden and everything is fabulous here. But they're suffering because they know their family back home isn't safe and that they're suffering because in Afghanistan right now, literally over half the population, about 20 million people, don't know where their next meal is coming from. And over 5 million have already fled the country. Um, and so it's a very difficult time. 
thank you for allowing me to be here this morning. It's a joy to be with you, and I bring you greetings from All Saints Lutheran in Phoenix, Arizona, where my husband has been the full-time church music director for 30 years. And uh, let us take a moment to pray. Dear God, help us remember you created and love every person on this earth, even those who are harming others and living in denial of you and of their true purpose, which is to learn to love you with all their heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love their neighbors as themselves. We want to be your love and light to all people. Help us be more willing to smile and say hello to people who look or dress differently than us. Help us be more aware of others' needs and struggles, and help us to be willing to reach out and welcome the stranger. We thank you for living in us and allowing your light to shine through us every day. Increase that light in us day by day. We love you. Amen and Amin, which is the Dari word for Amen. Well, living in a big city like Phoenix, and before that I was in Minneapolis, and our neighbors were kind of hermits and didn't really talk to each other. So I didn't realize one person could make a difference in a community. When I go to the store, I never see the same person. But last year when I was in Albania, I found out that I was wrong. One person can change a community if you dare to love everyone and see even the person with the worst behavior as the lost lamb God is searching for in the Good Shepherd story. I consciously decided I wanted to follow God's mandate to leave all judging of others to God. And instead, I wanted to see everyone as God's beloved child, even if they were living in total denial of God. I chose to believe that everyone is doing the best that they can, considering what they're believing and that God is longing for all to be set free in God's love. Well, when I first got to Albania, I was struck by several things. First, I started attending the Afghan Women's Safe Space. It was a place where singles, young moms, and older women came to work through their emotions and all of the, the trauma they had been through with a psychologist. And I noticed every day they came in with their heads down, their shoulders slumped, looking so oppressed and depressed because this was heavy work they were doing in this space. I had brought round knitting looms to Albania to teach the women's space to make caps and scarves because many of them were going to the northern United States and Canada. And they didn't have any warm clothing that they had brought with from Afghanistan. So I sat down on the floor of this space with the women and showed them how easy it was to just loop this around and then flip each loop off. And they loved it and found it was very relaxing to be able to do this. And because they had yarn now, the older women began teaching the younger women how to knit and crochet little outfits for their babies. And they were all so happy to have something productive to do with this time of waiting. Well, it didn't take long for me to realize that these women were very starved of physical touch. Afghans don't typically touch each other a lot, and even a husband would only touch his wife in secret. So every day, I would come and go in, and I would bend down and hug each woman in the circle. And pretty soon, when I started coming through the door, they would all stand up and put their arms in open for their hug. And then I asked one of my intermediate students to teach me how to say I love you in Dari, which is Dostet Darum. And so the next day I came in and I went around the, to all the women and I said, Dostet Darum, Dostet Darum. Well, the following day when I came in and I gave a hug and said, Dostet Darum, the, the woman said, I love you too. <laughs> They had taught, they had asked the translator to teach them how to say that in English because I had learned how to say it in their language. But the funny thing is they really didn't know what to meant. So then when I would get to the door in the morning and I'd open it, they'd all go, I love you too! <laughs> that was so sweet. <laughs> Soon I noticed that the women were now excited to come to 
in this space and happy to see each other and they actually began to give each other hugs for the first time. And it dawned on me that before I had become part of their space, they'd never known it was okay to touch, to love, to enjoy each other in life since they had grown up in a place where war has been going on in the area for a hundred years. And I'm sure it's hard to believe it's okay to be joyful when you don't know which of your acquaintances has had another person close to them really shot, maimed, or killed by a bomb, a knife, or a gun. And so they felt an obligation to be oppressed on behalf of everyone who had lost someone. So I did a presentation to show them that as we live joyfully, we actually lift others and we are aiding the lifting of the world into God's love, peace, and joy. The word God in Arabic is Allah. It's the, it's the same God. <laughs> they just aren't in relation with Jesus as the Christian churches. So I could easily speak of God while I was there, which was very helpful. Second, um, I offered my services in integrative therapies to my students, most of whom were in their 20s and most of whom were there alone without any family members. And in my integrative therapy work with hospice, I had helped people identify negative emotions they were holding and release them and replace it with a positive opposite of what they had released. And I thought it would be the young women who would come to me for help with this because they'd been through so much in Afghanistan. They had their jobs taken away, the ability for any girl to go to school at all. They can't go to a shop, a park, a restaurant, a gym. They aren't even allowed to go outside their door without a male escort. And what's happening that's really scary is if they're not married, they can just be taken at any time from the time they're about 13 years old and forced to marry a member of the Taliban who may have three or four wives. So it's a really difficult situation. So I thought these women would need help dealing with those emotions um, because of all of that. But because they spend more time talking with each other and supporting each other, they really did need that help. It was my young men students who came to me for help because they had seen and been parts of horrific things. You know, when a suicide bomb goes off, it's not a pretty sight around that area. And since the men were out, they saw those things. So um, I supported them in that, and it was really fun to see one of my 18-year-old students who had quit coming to class. He had quit leaving his room, and he had quit eating. He just wanted to die. He wasn't able to deal with the heaviness of what he had experienced. And uh, when we worked together and prayed together and released the negative emotions and added the positive emotions, the next day he was back out with his friends, back in, in class again, and it was such a joy to see how, the power of prayer. Lastly, I saw with each of my students that nature was very healing and freeing and refreshing, so I regularly began taking the men out on one weekend and the women out on the next weekend, because they never do things together, to the mountains where they could feel uh, free from all of the burdens, and that was a time that the men could even feel it was okay to cry and release some of that pain that was suffocating them. Through these things, I finally realized one person can make a difference. And here is how anyone can make a positive difference right where you are. Take time each day to just sit in God's love and allow it to radiate from you. That's such a beautiful gift to the world. And then you will begin to notice the needs and pains of others. And then just do what you can to be a compassionate, helpful friend, reaching out to in God's love. It's an amazing gift to help people, help restore people's dignity by the way that you treat them and see them as worthy of your time and attention. And so um, I'd like to offer a song now, Let There Be Peace on Earth, which will have to let me take just a minute here to get my letters reset. These are the flats and sharps on the harp. 
And if they're in the wrong place, it really doesn't sound good. children. 
The money raised from this book will support she and her brother as they live in Pakistan waiting to get to a safer, more stable country. <laughs> Uh, it's a wonderful gift for your church library or any school teacher because it'll really help children appreciate a lot more what a gift it is to be able to have school available to them. Over the past few months, uh, Quran has applied for 69 different colleges in across European countries. They are impressed when they talk with her but they always have an excuse not to consider her because she's from Afghanistan. No one wants Afghans. And that's how they feel right now. It's really difficult. And if she went to another country for college, they know they couldn't send her back because Afghanistan is the worst place in the world right now for women's rights. Other countries are not allowing any Afghans in for any reason. So it's been very discouraging to her, but I just keep thinking she's meant to be in the U.S. But her brother can't apply for her. He can only apply for his parents, and, and refugees can apply for their minor children. But since she's not minor, she doesn't qualify. There are several ways we can help in regard to this huge social justice need. You can pray that the Taliban will remember who God created them to be someone who loves God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, and loves their neighbor as himself, not someone who's terrorizing other people. And Sirius explained to me that there are two Taliban's in, in Afghanistan. There's the Afghan ones, and there are the Pakistani ones. They're, be, they're taking little boys out of orphanages at, as young as eight years old and teaching them to shoot assault rifles and bringing them over. And that's all they know, you know, is shoot anybody you see kind of thing. So it's, it's very difficult, and they don't have any compassion for the Afghans. Um, you can also support our ministry through your prayers. I fell uh, just a couple weeks before we left and really injured my shoulder. And so it's only by God's grace that I am playing the harp today because I literally, I couldn't lift my arm. And, now, and then when I finally could lift it, I could only lift it like this, but I couldn't extend it. But now, look, it still hurts when I bring it out to here, but I can play. Um, and today, 100% of anything you purchase out there is going toward Afghans and refugees, uh, Afghans in need, because so many of them don't have food. And a lot of my students will call me and they'll say, could you send $300 to my family for a month of food? <laughs> And I'm not going to say no. You know, I have so much. That's, that's so little for me. So um, that's very helpful that when you make a purchase out there. Uh, the only thing that we're taking out of the money out there is just what it costs us for gas. And we're staying in host homes, and most of the time we don't even have to pay for food. So a lot, most of your money will go directly to the Afghans and the refugees. You can also become a volunteer with a group like Lutheran Social Services, the International Rescue Committee, or Catholic Social Services. Many of these agencies are desperately looking for someone to just mentor one family or one person who comes to help them understand our culture, our money, um, you know, how to navigate. I, I worked with Bosnian refugees in the 90s. And I found out our social services system is set up to make people fail. I couldn't even figure out how to fill out some of the stuff they had to fill out in order to be able to get food stamps before they're able to get a job because they don't have a social security number yet. And so what would happen is if I didn't get down to those refugees within the time frame, their case would be closed because they only had a week to return these these papers, and then we'd have to start all over from the beginning, so it would take longer to get that help. So as we appreciate our privileged situation in the U.S. and all we've been given, I invite you to prayerly, prayerfully consider how God is calling you to be a blessing, not only to your neighbors here, but across the world. We did leave Afghanistan in a worse position than we found it, because now the Taliban has all our latest weaponry. And so the, the normal people of Afghanistan have no way to stand up 
against that weaponry. I asked Sirus why he was so strongly expecting that things could change in Afghanistan. He, would like, he went all the way through med medical and dental school in uh, Afghanistan, but that's, they won't accept it here. And so in order to get the public health master's degree he'd like to get, he has to start all over again with the bachelor's degree as a 29-year-old. <laughs> it's so crazy. But I asked him why he was so strongly expecting that things could change in Afghanistan and he would have an opportunity to return and help rebuild his country. And he replied with an answer I love, faith. Please pray with me. God, we thank you for the beautiful lives you've given each of us, blessed with opportunities to learn and share and care with each other. Fill us with the faith that we can never outgive you. And let us always be ready to share with our neighbor next door and our neighbors across the world, because you love us all equally. Amen and Amen. Well, the next song is Bind Us Together, but you don't have the words for that, because it's not in your red hymnal, I don't think. But how many of you know just the chorus? Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. So if you can do that, please sing that along with me. And I will sing the verses.
Help us in our struggle. Heal our relationships and inspire us to new ways to be of love and service to you and our neighbors. Lord, in your mercy, you separated the oceans, carved out lakes and rivers, and established the network of wetlands and watersheds across the world. Make us ever mindful of our dependence on this life-giving water and inspire us to work diligently to ensure all people to have access to clean water. Lord, in your mercy, give all who lead the humility to accept the challenges that we face and the persistence to address those challenges however long it takes. Lord, in your mercy, we uplift those whose difficulties have left them wounded in body or mind. Hold and comfort them that they might find strength to walk through their difficulties. Lord, in your mercy, spur us to stand with those who are victims of systemic racism, whose lives and communities are torn apart by both internal and state violence. Teach us how to take action to bring change to our deeply flawed society. Lord, in your mercy, we remember the saints who by their example showed us how to persist in the face of struggles, always trusting in you to give them strength. May we too persevere as they modeled for us until we see them again at the end of all things. Lord, in your mercy, we place in your loving arms these our prayers, spoken and unspoken, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
more toward this ministry to go to the Afghans and the refugees. So if you still have that and you want to put something in there, you can drop it at the table afterwards. Thank you very much. Thank you. 